Shai Shalom. Before I start, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rakha Kodash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim Wa learning, teaching, and truth and sincerity. Another video through the Spirit. All right, hey, I'm pretty sure y'all have seen the news. You know how China apparently had a, uh, you know, a spy balloon up in America and it was just shot down. And this is going to be a recording of it being shot down from, you know, the uh, a, a person who happened to be, you know, in the state that it was over. Hey, one of the things about social media, you know, is this at this point is it's becoming more reliable than the news because we get to see the actual footage of what was going to what's going down in an area by the people that are there. All right. You know, say this is your brother Malak out of GMS Detroit. Another uh, daily, you know, uh, uh, Pro fuck uh, modern day madness and prophecies there we go all right so i just got this clip and a couple of others uh we gonna let it roll all right jack oh, that was coming at it oh it's coming at oh, you know what i wanted to uh make this point i heard another brother mention it too i forget what camp i was listening to but you got to think y'all they didn't they didn't inflate this balloon in china and sell it all the way across the ocean this had to be done nearby so whether that means there's you know chinese spies inside of america which is very likely and more than you know more than likely or whether it be you know they had a chinese u-boat you know a fucking submarine somewhere in the water just posted you know so just that's something i you know just wanted to mention you got to think that they didn't this this balloon didn't sail five thousand miles across the ocean you know it was it was put up close you know so that time hey we almost about to be in the day of the battle that is my boat it's like, of course, you know, we're not, we have to get to the mark before full-blown World War ending, you know, uh, planetary ending World War Three pops off. No, no, it's going for it. It's shooting it. That's a missile. Oh, I just got this on video, dog. Boom, it knocked it out. Oh, look. He did, he did, he hit it. Holy, I just got it on video. Holy, Dude, I just called that on video, bro. Dude. Bro, they just shot it down the sky. I promise you, they just shot it down the damn sky. You just got videos on it. Come on, for real. No, no. There's, a, yeah, there's a spot or a jet. Oh, that was coming at it. You know, it's just replaying, but right there, they caught this on video. You know, so the, it's getting close, y'all. The, the war is about to be next door and in our backyards soon. And that's the prophecy that the... You know, America will get invaded. This place for too long has sat untouched. So it, it must get touched. It must feel, you know, uh, uh, occupancy, you know, an uh, uh, occupying force. You know, ever since it's been established after the Revolutionary War, America was no longer, you know, uh, it hasn't been invaded. Well, that's about to change. All right, I'm about to, uh, let's see. We can deal with this one. Yeah, Isaiah 47 and, uh, well, we'll start at verse 1 real quick. It says, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit down on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Alright, so this place was, you know, tender and delicate, the virgin daughter, because it hasn't been touched. Well, it's about to get touched, it's about to get defiled. And what is going to defile it? Outright war. Isaiah 47 and 8. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly. How do Americans do carelessly their entire lifestyle? All right, and everything, entertainment, food, you know, uh, sex, everything. You know, these worthless jobs they got us working. These people were distracted. It says, that says in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. The loss of children and widowhood they shall come upon thee in the perfection and the multitude of thy sorceries, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. All right, so ultimately this place will be destroyed in thermonuclear warfare all in one day. The, the, the day that the missiles fly off is going to be the day that this place is destroyed. It ain't going to be no two-week delay period. It ain't going to be no whole month of missiles being shot. That day is going to be that day, and this place will get touched. All right, next clip. All right, and this is another clip. You know, once again, hey, these people are, they're still in play, play mode. You know, there's play, play mode is about to stop and we're going to be in, in death, death mode. <laughs> Ain't going to be no play, play, just death, death everywhere. 
All right, so this guy went and rented a fucking Airbnb in the Ukraine. You know, this is, and he has the spirit of Edom upon him. You know, he looks like a gook, but he has that Edomite carefree spirit upon him. Who who would travel to a war zone? Hey, look, man. Hey, I don't even know how. Fuck it. Let me look. Have you ever wondered what it's like to Airbnb in a war zone? Welcome to my $20 Airbnb in Kharkiv, Ukraine. Hi, guys. Apparently, this is where I'm staying in Kharkiv. The windows are. See, it's still a joke to these people, y'all. Their mortality hasn't set in yet. That you can die screaming covered in your own blood. Ridden with pain until you croak the fuck over. Who would go travel to a war zone, dog? <laughs> hey, let me let it, uh, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. I'm a broken. <laughs> that elevator's not working. Oh, okay. I just got into the apartment. This looks nice. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my god. It's there wasn't any broken windows, but that's because there were no windows. Honestly, the sleep was not great. The mattress was fine, but there were explosions all throughout the night. The next morning, we had to evacuate. We're in the at the moment. We're coming to get you right now. We ended up getting caught in an explosion and nine people died. I can't show any footage of the explosion because TikTok has taken down three of my last four videos. So I spent three straight days editing a full YouTube. So. Wow, dude. This this dude went into a war zone and got caught up in a damn explosion. What did he say? Nine people died or something? So I don't know if he meant people around him or maybe the caravan he was traveling with. I don't know. If he's from the United States, he's speaking good English, so he has to have some sort of affiliation with the United States. But this is the spirit that these people are in, y'all. These people, they, they think it's a fucking joke. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is about to, he's going to remind these people that life is not a joke. You know, I couldn't, hey, that, that's, 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 that's something else. But that, that's the spirit of Babylon for you. That's the spirit of America. Got you going to war zone so you can record for TikTok because you think something's funny. And when one of them boys run up on you and do you like they did Muammar Gaddafi, all right, where you get the phrase, uh, uh, we gonna Gaddafi you, you know, for you brothers that's a little bit uh, older. You remember back in, uh, or you know, you paid attention to the news, right? You remember back like 07, or uh, no, when he died, I think he died in 09. You know, Gaddafi got fucking sodomized with a buck knife. I Meaning what? Somebody shoved a fucking <laughs> buck knife up his butt right before they shot him to death so you know if he, if he if they started doing him like that you know by them russians i bet you he wouldn't be laughing for fucking tiktok all right i'm gonna deal with this uh now you know this is in the law you know given to the israelites you know us above, above anybody all right but this is just, you know just general knowledge you don't go intentionally you know playing around with potentially deadly situations all right deuteronomy 6 and 16 ye shall not tempt yahweh bashim yahweh shah your power as he tempted him in Massa. All right. And, you know, so but this is the spirit that is encouraged in Babylon. Everyone on the earth is so carefree in their actions and their words. You know, you're supposed to be, uh, you know, reasonable. Hell, y'all, even in our folly, you know, when you kick it back and drinking or you just going out to eat, you're still s s circumspect. You're, you still walk as wise, you know, not. A, let me get that out of uh, Ephesians uh, circumspectly. Uh, five. Yep. You know, that's, that's just a foolish little dude. You know, he's not going to be around much longer. <laughs> he's not going to be able to spread his gene into the gene pool. You feel me? Ephesians 5, 15 through 16. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. All right. Another one. You go to Peter, uh, first Peter, I believe five, you know, Hey, we got to come out of that dumb, stupid, I'm an untouchable American spirit. Because that is a good way to get yourself destroyed. All right, First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. All right, and not only, you know, now literally, there's not a, a red skinned lion looking to eat us, but spiritually, you have the ability to get taken up out this truth if you're not moving right. And literally, you have the ability to get put down if you're not moving right. You know, there's certain times I'll be out and about, you know, you go into a gas station. You see nothing but a bunch of <laughs> niggas with their hoodies on looking grimacing and shit. You know, old 1999 cars, man. Just, just go to the next station, man. Just keep it rolling. You know, hey, the Lord keep us safe. But there ain't no point in, in 
intentionally hopping into situations when you can avoid them. All right. And I don't got no problem skipping to the next gas station. Shit, I'll push that bitch to the next station and then stop around some wily coyote Negroes. All right. This clip right here. This is a good one. Form of eugenics. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Plan. Said, uh, birth, you know, it's missed out the first part, but she said birth control is a form of eugenics, which is true, in which I did a video recently. Eugenics is so-called, if you will, racist science that justifies white superiority all over all the other nations, especially the Negro and Latino, you know, nationalities, if you will. Parenthood was a eugenicist who believed undesirable populations should not procreate mentally and physically disabled on white individuals and people who lived in poverty. He believed that birth control was the answer to wiping out the greatest present menace to civilization. Sanger teamed up with biologist Gregory Pincus, who created an oral contraceptive in 1950 with the help of Dr. John Rock. They decided that Puerto Rico was the perfect place for human trials because it was overpopulated. Did a video recently on it you can go look up the puerto rican cancer experiments now that's separate from this dealing with this but you know esau loves to go to our place goes to places where israelites and poverty are and use us as human living test subjects go look up uh the puerto rican cancer experiment by uh what there were no let me, let me just bring up his name okay here's his name i was about to fuck his name up yep puerto rican cancer experiment look this guy up it says Cornelius Packard Dusty Rhodes was an American pathologist, oncologist, and his hospital administrator who was involved in a racist scandal and subsequent whitewashing in the 1930s. And this is true. And this guy was on Times Magazine. And here it is. This guy tried to literally exterminate, you know, Ephraim, you know, by way of purposely giving them and infecting them with cancer. And he went on to become a military, uh, you know, scientist. He was helping with developing weapons, I believe, for world war ii you know chemical and you know science-based weapons you know so hey every his medical system's completely against us plain and simple but look into that guy cornelius rhodes do you know that the birth control pill was originally used as a form of eugenics margaret sanger the founder of planned parenthood was a eugenicist who believed undesirable populations should not procreate mentally and physically disabled on white individuals and people who lived in poverty he believed that birth control was the answer to wiping out the greatest present menace to civilization sanger teamed up with biologist gregory pincus who created an oral contraceptive in 1950 with the help of dr john rock they decided that puerto rico was the perfect place for human trials because it was overpopulated, there were no anti-birth control laws, and there were already many birth control clinics that were once funded by the U.S. government before being handed over to Clarence Gamble, who was the heir to Procter & Gamble. Gamble was also a eugenicist who believed that people who lived in poverty needed to be eliminated from society. He was heavily involved in the sterilization of at least one-third of all Puerto Rican women. Dr. Gregory Pincus decided to experiment on poor, uneducated women in San Juan starting in 1955. None of the women were told that the drug was experimental. None had informed consent. Many women complained about side effects, nausea, dizziness, vomiting, stomach pain, and even blood clots. But Pincus dismissed all the reports, even though three women died during the trial. Gamble funded yet another trial to experiment the pill on women in insane asylums, again, without any informed consent. In 1960, the pill was approved as a form of contraception, even though its side effects were never fully understood. Do you know that the birth control pill... So, you know, hey, nothing but facts. You can get on the internet You can get on the internet and Google this. And what does this go to show you? This is the devil. This is who we're dealing with. And that uh, that ugly, pan-faced bitch, uh, Margaret Sanger, we gonna, we gonna, she's going to feel nothing but torture. And she's not going to be a worker. She sure, she ain't going... And she she's going to be a living pet of torture. The rest of the that a thousand years we get our hands on you, Edomites, Margaret Sanger, we gonna fucking torture every bump, we gonna torture every cell in your fucking body. Alright. Now Esau, you can take that and chop it up however you fucking will. Cause that woman did nothing but cause us pain and torture. Alright, let me get uh let me get this. Hey, real quick, you know, a basic one, but it's always a reminder. You know, you gotta be careful when dealing with this devil, y'all. Alright, Sirach nineteen and twenty six. There's a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit, casting down his countenance, and making as if he heard not, where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief before thou be aware. And that is E. He sets us up, he'll invite you, he, he, now all these people just went and got jabbed, and now all of a sudden motherfuckers is falling out, you know? He's pretending like he said, oh, we're, we're here to help the sick, we're here to cure, we're here to, 
you know, help you to prevent you from having babies so you can have more money. So, you know, oh, you know, come, come to the clinic. And then next thing you know, you got a fucking, you got a, a, a dinosaur growing out your neck and your blood's turning black, you know, dealing with E. You can't trust this guy under any circumstance. All right, what does it say? Verse 28. It says, and if for want of power, he be hindered from sinning, yet he findeth uh, opportunity. It says uh, he will do evil, meaning what? So he'll pretend to be good. You know, he'll pretend to help. He'll pretend to be a good person. But that's only so he can overthrow you in the end because he's truly evil. And that's that's what you call the word insidious. You look up the word insidious and it's hidden evil, basically evil, lying, waiting and potential. And that's everything about this man's character. He's wickedness waiting in the darkness, waiting to devour you. All right. We'll deal with this clip right here. I know some of y'all have seen it. This may be a skit. I'm thinking it's a skit, but this is the spirit that's out here now. I didn't want a Tesla. I don't want. I don't like electric cars. Wait, I what? For a Mercedes Benz, I don't like Tesla. You like? You said you like the electric I never cars. I said I like Tesla. I said a Mercedes Benz. I don't like. Tesla. Well, you gotta like. This is better than a Mercedes Benz. It's not. But I don't want no car that. If I gotta, I gotta charge it for it to work. I didn't want that. Girl, you gotta be grateful that you got a damn car. I could have, I could have just been walking, and I would rather walk. I can't look at the car. Why? You, got, you should be happy. Be grateful. You can put your, put the keys back in your purse. Oh, and I will. And don't ask me for nothing now. <laughs> yeah. See, you know, hey. She wouldn't have never, I, I would have disowned her after that. But, you know, like I said, I think this is a skit, but this goes to show you the spirit that's out here in the world. You know, motherfuckers is ungrateful. Motherfuckers is demons. You know, man, I, man, hey, you, I, I would have been, I would have been nice and happy with a Tesla at 16. Oh my God, birthday? Well, what did you want? And, and you gave me the truck I do. This is the car. It's not the truck. This is the car one. You guys, look. You can have all your gifts back because why would you do this? This is my sweet 16 and my golden birthday and you gave me a... Yeah, in America, does, it promotes that self-worship. My, my six sweet team, my golden birthday. Ain't nothing... Mm. Oh, man. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Second address, 8 and 50. It says, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter times shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. All right. And then it's 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 coming, y'all. You know, like I said, that might be a skit, but that's that there, there's many situations you see like that on a real level where people are just unfucking grateful. It tells you, let me see. Let me get that also out of uh That's uh Second Edges 8 Timothy, I believe. You know, it lets you know what type of people we're going to be dealing with in the last days. That's why every day you step out the house, it's just, you got to deal with these motherfuckers, dog. Second Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, disobedient to parents. Which you're seeing in that clip, whether it was real or not, because we know it happens in real life. All right. Art imitates, uh, art imitates life. Unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truth breaker, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinence, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of Yahweh, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So we got to avoid, uh, we have to avoid all those personalities and aspects and types of people and us ourselves, we got to make sure we don't become like that. You know, even with some, hey, even, you know. You know, if a motherfucker fucking heathen hand me something or give me something in the world, I'll say thank you. You know, that's just that's just manners. You know, we nobody I was sitting here having an imaginary argument with myself earlier in the morning. I'm like, damn, don't nobody want to be a good person no more. What happened to genuinely trying to be a, a, a upright individual? And that don't mean you got to be a pussy because we not we not, uh, you know, hey, hey, I, I, I y'all know me. I got the potty mouth, but that doesn't mean you have to be a pushover or a softy. You can be an upright, a, a upright individual, and still have an edge about yourself, you know, austere. But what everybody out here, motherfucker, just just talk crazy, no manners, no, you know, nothing, man, nothing, muff, muff, oh, man. <laughs> People don't even, man, tuck your shirt, in, Jay. <laughs> 
It's just crazy. It's just it's the end of the world. And that's why it says the last days here in Second Timothy. And in that second address eight and fifty, it said in the latter times. Pride, man. All right. It's time for this world to fall. You know, so that's about it. <laughs> I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, for Kakurash to honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the Akimwa Akwa, learning, teaching, and truth and sincerity. Shalom.